Hi, this is Mrs. Arroyo, and today I'm reading Don't Feed the Worry Bug by Andy Green. On a bench in a park on a bright sunny day, whence the monster of worry let time slip away. He looked at the clock. It was a quarter past two, when Wentz started to think about all he must do. He had homework and laundry. He needed clean pants. He must bake some cookies for the worry-woo dance. Then Wentz started to wonder, did he leave the light on? Was his backside too poofy? Where had all his friends gone? And his worries kept growing till he heard a soft buzz that made goosebumps appear, for he knew what it was. There was only one creature that made such a sound around monsters that worry it could often be found. Some call it the worry bug, and this is for sure. If you feed it a worry, it will always want more. Buzz, buzz, Wince heard as its noisy wings flapped. It flew up and down as he shooed and he clapped. It flittered and fluttered around Wince's ear. In the blink of an eye, more worries appeared. Did he feed his fish, Ted? Did his dog get a bone? Did he send all his woo mail? Did he bring his bike home? Should he go to the movies? Would he get a good grade? Will the weather be nice for the Wu-Town Parade? And with every new worry that came Wince's way, the worry bug shouted, hip hip hooray. For the more that Wince worried, the more the bug grew. It nibbled and munched on his worry-filled stew. Wince said to the worry bug, perhaps you should leave. He asked quite politely, and even use please. Yet the worry bug stayed, for the two of them knew that Wince would still worry. That's what he would do. As day turned to night, Wince got ready for bed. The worry bug yawned and laid next to his head. But its buzzing kept Wince from going to sleep. So he tossed and he turned, and he tried to count sheep. While thoughts of what if, could be, maybe it might, made Wentz worry more. He was worried all night. When morning arrived, Wentz looked up and gasped. The worry bug had grown. It had happened so fast. It used to be tiny, an annoyance quite small. Now it covered his kitchen, the ceiling, and wall. The bug's belly gurgled, full of worries it was. No longer could Wince sweep it under the rug. Its buzzing went on, and Wince started to fret about all of the things that hadn't happened just yet. No cookies were baked, the laundry had piled. Wince hadn't done homework in such a long while. Enough, Wince exclaimed. There must be a way to get rid of a worry bug. It can no longer stay. So Wince went to the library to read and take notes about catapults, cranes, wagons, and goats. He plotted and mapped out a worry bug graph, then called in the experts, the worry bug staff. Together, they studied this big growing beast and built a bug net out of Wince's bed sheets. They were having such fun, Wince was worried no more, and soon he was baking and doing his chores. But just when Wince thought his work was complete, the worry bug buzzed. I need something to eat. Wince looked at the bug. It was once again small. For while Wince had been busy, he hadn't worried at all. You've ignored me all day, the tiny bug said. And you haven't been worried, so I haven't been fed. Then the bug stomped its feet and buzzed all the more. Wince took a firm stand and showed it the door. 
I've got things to do. I must work. I must play. I'm not going to worry. So go on your way. Buzz, buzz, Wince heard as the bug flew about, still trying to make one last worry come out. It flittered and fluttered around Wince's ear, yet Wince wouldn't give in, and it soon disappeared. Wince knew very well that this wasn't the end. The bug might be back if he worried again, but Wince would be ready should he hear that buzz buzz to say no to the worry bug simply because Wince had learned that his worries got bigger each day when he allowed the worry bug to nibble away. So to all of your worriers, Wince wants you to know, don't feed the worry bug or your worries will grow. The end.